Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Question 2, 2018, um, one of the shorter questions, the 25 marker. The diagram shows the standard normal curve. The shaded area represents 67% of the data. Find the value of Z1. Okay. So this is, is a bit of a backwards one. They've given you the proportion or the percentage that is covered up to that line. Okay. So in other words, they want to know what Z value you write this out in English, what's Z value equates to 0.67, okay? So the way I, I remembered it was if it was a percentage, then the 0.67 is within the body of the Z score table, okay? Um, so, what Z value equates to 0.67, okay? So you're going down through these tables, okay? It's always gonna start at 0.5 because remember this is symmetrical and the tables don't have the negative um, standard deviations, just the positives, okay? So you already have 50% by the time you get to the mean here in the middle. So that's why we start at 0.5, okay? So let's find 0.67, okay? So you trawl through each line and it does go up numerically, 0.65, 0.67, okay? So that is the one that we want, 0.67, okay? So that is 0.4 and then up here for a second place of decimal, four. So 0.44, okay? So Z equals 0.44. In other words, this line here is almost half a standard deviation above the mean, okay? So one standard deviation above the mean must be somewhere here, okay? Because that's what a z-score is. How many standard deviations are you above the mean? So 0.44. Part B, the percentage results in a maths exam for a class had a mean mark of 70 with a standard deviation of 15. The percentage results in an English exam for the same class had a mean mark of 72 and a standard deviation of 10. The results in both exams were normally distributed. Okay. Mary got 55, sorry, Mary got 65 in maths and 68 in English. In which exam did Mary do better relative to the other students in the class? Okay, now this is where Z scores come out of the, on their own. And in manufacturing, this would be used to compare uh, two machines in a factory. So maybe making Coke, for example. Um, one might be old, one might, might be new, and you're comparing the throughput or how good each machine is, okay? So you can only ever compare it to the mean and the standard deviation of that machine, or in this question of the class. Okay, to look at them, you'd assume she did better in English. Okay, but that's not taking into account how hard the tests were. Um, maybe there was time constraints on the test and maybe there was just too many questions for the time allowed and so on and so forth. So you take each value in turn and you compare it to its mean and its standard deviation. Okay, and you normalize them. So what I mean by that is you figure out for the, her result, how far was she from the mean? Um, how many standard deviations was she from the mean? Okay, so you do it um, subject by subject. So let's do maths first. Okay, so the formula you're using is a standardizing formula that's here where you compare, you compare the result, that's the value that you're testing minus the mean over the standard deviation. You compare each, her value in the test, Mary's value in the test, to the mean and the standard deviation of that class, okay? So for Mary, it's 65 minus the mean in maths was 70, standard deviation was 15. So let me hit the fraction button, 65 minus 70 all over 15. 
So she's minus a third uh, down from the mean, okay? Or if you prefer, uh, minus 0.33, okay? And then how did she do in English? Um, again, it's the same formula. I'm going to compare Mary's English mark, which was 68, to the mean of that class, which was 72, over the standard deviation, which was 10. Okay, hit the fraction button, just put this into your calculator, over 10, um, that's a third, minus two fifths, or as a decimal, minus 0 0.4. Okay, so which one did she do better in? Well, let's draw our normal distribution. Let's have a look. Okay, so on any uh, normal distribution, that's zero, that's minus one standard deviation, so minus two, minus three, one standard deviation up, two and three, and they're fully symmetrical, okay? So in maths, she was minus 0 0.33 away from the mean, so a third, so roughly here. So that was maths and minus 0 0.4. So slightly down, okay, my, my graph is exaggerated a lot. That was English, okay? So which one did she do better in? Well, she did better in maths, okay? And she did better with in maths because she was closer to the mean of the class, okay? Because as you know, the bigger a negative number, the worse it is, okay? So, uh, Mary did better in maths as she was closer to the mean for that subject. Okay, now I must say if the results have been positive, so if, if you were up this side of the mean, okay, if that was maths, okay, for example, and this was English, then of course she would again do better in English, okay? Because positive numbers, the bigger the better. Okay, I, I hope that makes sense. Um, in English, the top 15% of students was awarded an A grade find the least whole number that merited the word of an A grade in English. Okay, so now we're up with the top half of the class and hopefully this will help also help explain the last one. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so this is English. Uh, let me go back for the mean of English was 72. And they're saying the top 15% of students, so top 15, so this would be the top 15% in the class. So these were the A students, okay? Find the least whole number mark that merited the award of an A grade in English. Okay, so I'm wondering what grade equates to um, the top 15%, okay? So let's write him, him down as, um, as a decimal, okay? Now, remember our normal distribution table. When we look up a value, we look up to the left of that line, okay? So if I need 15% here, I need to have I need to have 85% down there, okay, or 0 0.85. So to figure out 15% here, I need 85% there. I look up 85% in my tables, okay, or 0 0.85, okay? So again, let's look up 0 0.85, or as close as you can get to it, 0 0.82. 8386, okay, let's go back, 8508, 8508, okay, it's closer than 8485, okay, so I would take this one here, 0.85, okay, um, 
yeah, some people might go one point one point oh three five, like halfway between the two, but that's close enough to 0 0.85. So 1.04. Okay. So top 15% or bottom 85%, whichever way you want to look at it, is the same as a Z score of, I've forgotten already, 1.04. Okay. So I'm working backwards. Remember what formula we use to look up Z scores. Okay we use this one. This is our normalizing formula. So to get a z-score, we take a value, we compare it to the mean over the standard deviation. It's just in this one, I know my z-score, but I don't know what that value was that I'm testing that gives me that z-score, but I do know my mean and I do know my standard deviation. Okay, so bring up the 10 up here. And of course I get 10.04 is equal to X minus 72. Bring over the 72 so that I get 10.04 plus 72 is equal to X. Or as I said 72, 82.04 is equal to X. So find the least whole number so I need a mark of 82.04 to be guaranteed in X. So therefore, nearest whole number is not 82, but in fact, to be sure of an A, you would need um, 83%. Okay, or a score of 83, I suppose, rather than... Yeah, let's go a score of 83 rather than 83% because my... Um, these weren't necessarily percentages. So 83, a score of 83 to be guaranteed to be in the top 15% of students, okay? So the way I remember it, if you get a percentage, you're inside the body of the table, okay? Where am I? If it's percentage, you're in here. Your flag for remembering it is you won't find 0 0.15 in the table. So have a think about it. Why is 0 0.15 not in that table? And hopefully that will flag for you the fact that you need to look at the other side of that line. OK, using the empirical rule or otherwise, estimate the percentage of students in the class who scored between 52 and 82 in that English test. OK, so the empirical rule. So this is what we did in the theory bit um, uh, in, in the last class. OK, so again, if we draw out the empirical rule, Okay, and I draw a normal distribution curve with my mean in the middle. Okay, we can say that um, you split each half into three standard deviations, two and three, one and two and three. Okay, so that's plus one standard deviation this is minus one standard deviation, okay? And it's all from that mean mu in the middle, okay? Um, minus two standard deviations, or plus two, then this way is minus two standard deviations. And from the mean up, that's three standard deviations away. And to get all the way down to this value, that's minus three standard deviations away. If you remember the percentages, I don't know where it went. No, we're back. Okay. So plus or minus one standard deviation is 68% of, of everything. Plus or minus two standard deviations, 95% of, of everybody will fall between that. And three standard deviations, 99.7%. And, and you've got to know these percentages here. Okay, so that's the empirical rule. Let's have a look at it for English. So if we remember, uh, our mean for English was 72 and our standard deviation was 10. So 72, 82, 92, 1 or 2, 62, 52, 42. Okay, and in this question, we want to look at from 52 
to 82. Okay, so if I consider that, I'm going minus two standard deviations down from the mean, but I'm only going up one standard deviation from the mean. What do I need? Estimate the percentage of students. Okay, so how do you do that when it's um, when it's it's not symmetrical? Okay, so down two, up one. Okay, well this is how you do it. If you consider the sixty-eight percent here, okay, that's plus or minus one standard deviation. Okay, then I can break this into thirty-four percent of it. Okay, is from the mean down to minus one standard deviation. And of course, the other 34% of it is from the mean up to one standard deviation. Okay, 34 and 34, yeah, is 68. So in other words, 34% of it is here. 34% of it is here. Okay, which means now that I know this area here between 72 to 82 is 34% of all data, whatever data this is, all the students in the class scored between 72 and 82. In the same way with, with um, 95, uh, 95 divided by two on my calculator is what I'm doing. 47.5% of it is from the mean up to plus two standard deviations. And of course the other 47.5% is from the mean down to minus two standard deviations. Okay, so that means from the mean down to here, okay, that is 47.5%. Uh, okay, and I probably should have colored him in. And he's 34%. Okay, so therefore I can conclude then that between uh, 52 to 82, I have 47.5% and then the 34%. So I have 81.5% of everybody in that area. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. That's using the empirical rule. Okay. Um, could you do it as a two-tailed test? So what do I mean by that? So remember when we did that question from a 2013 paper where we did the two-tailed test and we worked out the proportion that was between them, you could do it absolutely as a two-tailed test as well. So I'd encourage you to try that. You'll get a slightly different answer. Um, but you'll get it in the same ballpark. So I did it with the empirical rule. Your otherwise way was a two-tailed z-score test. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.